subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. So now look at this question. They have given us some signals xt and they are asking us to calculate the Laplace transform xs. Sketch the pole zero plot. Pole zero plot means simply representing poles and zeros in the s plane and then uh, just sketch the ROC for the given signals. Okay. So we have already seen that we can decide upon uh, the ROC of a system depending on the nature of the signal. Right. So we start with the first part. Uh, so this is basically this can be calculated using linearity of Laplace transform that is if we are adding two signals then their Laplace transform also going to be simply added. So firstly I calculate uh, Laplace for e to the power minus 2t ut. We know that Laplace of ut is 1 by s and when I am multiplying this with e power minus 2t it is just going to create a shift of plus 2 in s domain and my ROC is going to be real part of S greater than minus 2. Right, we have seen this property, okay. And what about the second signal e to the power minus 3 t ut? This is going to have Laplace 1 by S plus 3. ROC is going to be real part of S greater than minus 3. Now, if you just look at these signals, see this part of the signal occurs for values of t greater than 0, and similarly, this part also occurs for values of t greater than 0. So, this is going to be a right handed signal, right? Right sided signal because it occurs only for values of t greater than 0. Since the signal is a right sided signal, what we have learned about the ROC? We have learned that ROC of a right sided signal is going to be right, righter to rightmost pole. Right. Uh, so, look, the only condition for Laplace transform of a signal to occur is that it's if you are combining two signals, then there must be some intersection in their ROCs. Only if ROC of the two signals overlap, only then the Laplace transform, corresponding Laplace transform is going to converge. Okay, that going to exist. Then what is it going to be? 1 by S plus 2 plus 1 by S plus 3, which can be simplified as if you just perform this uh, operation, okay, this is going to be 2s plus 5 upon s plus 2 into s plus 3. Or if I uh, want to write it in pole 0 form, this is going to be 2 into s plus 5 by 2 upon s plus 2 into s plus 3. And what is going to be the ROC? Right, right to the rightmost pole. Now it has two poles, two poles at s is equal to minus 2 and s is equal to minus 3. Now I want the ROC. Okay, even if, if, even if you just look at the intersection of these two regions, okay, one part says that real part of s should be greater than minus 2, other says real part of s should be greater than minus 3. These, both of these are, are going to have some intersection, common part overlapping only when real part of s is greater than minus 2 right so this is going to have 1 0 at s is equal to minus 5 by 2 and 2 poles at s is equal to minus 2 and minus 3 so if i just try to sketch the roc for this signal what is it going to be so we are having a we are having a pole at minus 2 pole at minus 3 0 at minus 5 by 2 and my ROC is going to be to the right of rightmost pole. This is going to be my ROC. ROC for the given signal. Okay. Uh, one more thing that you can notice. Poles and zeros of a system are always going to interlace. What does interlace means? They are going to occur alternately. One pole, then one zero, then one pole. Okay. This is how poles and zeros of a system, of a stable system are going to occur. If a system is stable, its, arrows, uh, its Laplace transform is going to converge, exist. Okay. So Laplace exists only for stable systems. Okay. Right. Now look at the next part. Again, we are going to do the same thing. e to the power minus 3t ut is going to have Laplace as 1 by s plus 3. ROC is going to be real part of s greater than minus 3. Similarly, e to the power 2t u of minus t is going to have Laplace as 1 by s minus 2 minus also since we have not included a minus sign here. Okay, So, it is going to occur here and ROC is going to be real part of s less than 2. Right? 
So these two ROCs are also going to overlap, right? This is greater than minus 3 and this is less than 2. So they're going to have intersection. They're going to overlap for values of real part of S between minus 3 and 2. So what can I say? What is X of S going to be? 1 by S plus 3 minus 1 by S minus 2. So if we just perform the subtraction, you're going to obtain minus 5 upon S plus 3 into s minus 2 and what is going to be the roc what is going to be the common region real part of s should be greater than minus 3 but less than 2 okay now see why did this happen if you just look at this signal if you try to look at the signal xt see for values of t greater than 0 it is having e to the power it is e to the power minus 3t Okay, something like this e to the power minus 3t value 1 at t is equal to 0, right? For values of t less than 0, it is e to the power 2t, e to the power 2t, which is something like this, okay? This is a, a rising signal, okay? Maybe, uh, okay, maybe I sketched it wrong, right? This would have been some more, more steep. Okay, what am I trying to say is that this signal, this signal is a infinite duration signal, two-sided signal. It has values ranging from t is equal to minus infinity to t is equal to infinity. And we've seen in the properties of ROC that when we are having a two-sided signal, infinite duration signal, its ROC is going to be a vertical strip. It is going to be finite duration, right? So, uh, and see, in the first example, in this example, well, this signal was a right sided signal so I had a right sided ROC for this signal okay right to right most pole now I had a infinite duration signal two sided signal so my ROC is going to be a vertical strip if you just sketch it so I have a pole at minus 3 and another pole at 2 and my ROC is between these two poles this is my ROC for the system, right? Since this uh, signal does not have any zeros, so this is how ROC is going to look like, okay? This is going to lie between these two poles. Why did this happen? Because my signal was a two-sided signal, right? Now look at the next part, look at. So uh, look at the third part now. So now they have given a signal e to the power 2t ut plus e to the power minus 3t u of minus t. Okay, so we are going to follow the same procedure. If you find the Laplace transform for e to the e 2t ut, so it is going to be 1 by s minus 2 and ROC is going to be real part of s greater than 2. For e to the power minus 3t u of minus t, this is going to be minus 1 upon s plus 3. And ROC is going to be real part of S less than minus 3. Now you can see that these two signals have no intersection. These two ROCs are not going to overlap anywhere. Now see why did this happen? So uh, firstly, first thing that you can see is since the ROCs do not overlap, XS is not going to exist. Does not exist. Okay. The signal is not going to have any transform. Now see why did this happen? If you just try to sketch x of t, x of t, right, which is combination of these two signals. Now see, at, look at this signal. This is going to have value 1 for t is equal to 0 and then increase exponentially. Similarly, for this signal, it's going to have value 1 at t is equal to 0 and then increase exponentially. Okay, now see. This signal is not a stable signal, okay? This is not a uh, absolutely integrable signal, right? That is why since this signal was not absolutely integrable or stable, its Laplace does not exist, okay? This signal, see, look at this signal. Its values, final values are tending to zero, okay? And this signal, first signal that they had given us, its final value also tended to zero. If you just put t is equal to infinity here, you'll see that final value tends to zero. Only for such signals, Laplace transform is going to exist. If a signal tends to infinity at t is equal to infinity, Laplace transform for that signal is not going to exist, okay? See did not exist because it is not going to converge for any value of s okay since the uh, roc did not overlap we could not find any common this okay uh, laplace transform right 
so now look at the last one so now they've given you x t is equal to e to the power minus a mod t minus a mod t so now what do we say uh, they've given us that uh, we have to sketch the find x s and sketch the whole zero plot and roc for two conditions first is a greater than zero second is a less than zero so uh, okay these are the two conditions now see since they're having we are having mod t in the signal what can i write this as i can write it as minus a into minus t for values of t less than zero i can just split the signal right for positive values of t this is going to be the signal right this is what mod means then when t is greater than zero it should be plus t when t is less than zero it should be minus t so what is my final signal what is my signal going to be e to the power minus a t u t plus e to the power a t u of minus t now this turns out to be similar uh, condition that we have solved just now so uh, okay i'm just going to sketch this signal first for both of these conditions this will make my point a little bit more clear right so when a is greater than 0 when a is greater than 0 this is going to what is going to happen when a is a positive number this value is going to converge to 0 finally okay when t tends to infinity also when t tends to minus infinity this will finally tends to 0 right this is this is what signal is going to look like when a is greater than 0 when a is less than 0 what is going to happen when a is less than 0 that it is a negative number these values start from 1 and on both the sides is going to tend to infinity right this is how my signal is going to look now uh, as you have seen already also the signal is not going to have any laplace transform okay laplace transform is going to exist for this signal only now let us look at it mathematically so what can i do e to the power minus at ut i am finding laplace transform for this one so is going to be 1 by s plus a And R O C is going to be real part of S greater than minus A. E to the power A T U of minus T. So it's going to be minus one by S plus A. Sorry, uh, it's going to be minus minus one upon S minus A, and R O C is going to be real part of S less than A. Okay. So now, now in the first case. If a is greater than zero, see what do I want? I want that this uh, this R O C should be greater than minus a, and this should be less than a. Now, for them to have intersection, if this a is a positive number, positive number means this is going to lie to the left of s is equal to zero line, and this is going to lie to the right of s is equal to zero line. Then they are going to have some overlapping. Okay. they are going to overlap if a is a positive number there is going to be some overlap and then what can i say the laplace transform is going to be 1 by s plus a minus 1 by s minus a now if you just perform this you are going to get minus 2a upon a square minus a square and what is going to be the roc it should lie between minus a and a okay so this has no zeros and it has two poles at plus a and minus a pole that S is equal to a and s is equal to minus a, right? And between these two poles, my ROC is going to lie. So this Laplace transform is con uh, converges. Okay, it exists. Now, if a is less than zero, then this becomes a positive number and this becomes a negative number. Now, I want a ROC which is greater than plus a and less than minus a, which is not possible. Okay, so if a is less than zero, then then what do we say? ROC ROCs of the of the two functions do not overlap. Functions do not overlap, and x of s does not exist. Then Laplace will not exist. Right. So the the transform is not going to exist. If I just try to sketch ROC for this case, this is going to be minus a. This is going to be plus a. and this is going to be my roc right also you can see that since this was a infinite duration signal it was existing from t is equal to minus infinity to infinity my roc was a vertical strip it was 
finite finite duration okay fine it occurred only for finite values of s right fine so now they have given us some shifted signals some signals with uh, several operations and they are asking you to find out the laplace transform and roc for each of the signals so we start with the first part this is a shifted impulse signal so you have seen the shifting property we know that laplace transform for delta is 1 so what happens when we are uh, shifting in time when you are shifting in time you are getting multiplication with this shifted amount e to the power minus st naught into 1 which is going to be the same and roc is going to be all values of s all s right now look at the next one so you know that ut has laplace transform 1 by s with roc real part of s greater than 0 now when we are making a shift of t naught what is going to happen same this is going to get multiplied with e to the power minus st naught upon s and ROC is going to be the same real part of S is going to be greater than 0. This uh, shifting operation is not creating any difference in the ROC of the signal. Right. Now look at the third part, C part. So I am just rewriting this. I am just opening the bracket. This is going to become e to the power minus 2t into ut minus e to the power minus 2t into u of t minus 5. Okay, so now just to uh, ensure that there is similar shift in both the time arguments in this signal, what can I do? I am just writing this as just multiplying and dividing with e to the power minus 10. Okay, so what is this going to become? I can write this as e to the power minus 10 into e to the power minus 2 into t minus 5 u of t minus 5. Okay, just multiplication and division with e to the power minus 10 right why because i needed this argument to become same okay now uh, we've seen that uh, laplace of ut is 1 by s and when we are multiplying this with e to the power minus 2t this is going to create a shift in s domain this is going to become 1 by s plus 2 right with roc real part of s greater than minus 2 right and what is this this is a constant so this is going to remain the same now see there are two operations this is multiplication with e to the power st naught also and time shifting also so in the laplace domain also you're going to get going to get both the operations how because of this shift of minus 5 we are going to get e to the power minus 5s in this domain and this uh, ut has this laplace 1 by s since i multiplied with e to the power minus 2t there is going to be plus 2 here right and uh, roc for this is also going to be real part of s greater than minus 2 so roc is going to be real part of s greater than minus 2 okay this is going to be my final answer you can just simplify it or leave it as it is it's up to you uh, look at the la next part now part d now see if I just expand this XTC, do not get confused you, uh, seeing this summation. This is not a discrete signal, okay. This is a continuous time signal only. Look at the argument, okay. There is no N here. This is a discrete, this is a continuous time signal only. If you just put one, two values of K, this will be clear. What is this? This is del T plus del of T minus T plus del of T minus 2T plus so on. So basically, this is a series of shifted impulse signals impulses occurring at 0 t 2 t 3 t etc if you just try to find out see you know that uh, this uh, laplace for impulse is going to be 1 even if you are making a shift in time domain you are just going to get multiplication with e to the power minus st in laplace domain right so what do uh, i get i get 1 plus e to the power minus st plus e to the power minus s t into 2 and so on till till infinity so if i just again try to write it as summation what can i write it as e to the power minus s t to the power k okay this is just a multiple okay see when you put k is equal to 0 you're going to get 1 when you put 1 this is uh, all the terms you're going to get like this right now see what can you see it as 
this also from here also you can see this is a gp right every term to obtain every next term you are multiplying with e to the power minus st right on multiplication e to the power minus st you are getting the next term and the final term this is a gp of infinite terms so i can just use the formula for sum of infinite gp first term is 1 upon 1 minus and common difference is e to the power minus st so this is going to be my Laplace for this one. And what is going to be your uh, ROC? ROC is going to be real part of S greater than 0. Real part of S greater than 0. Why? Because if S is not greater than 0, okay? If real part of S is not greater than 0, this GP would not converge, okay? This sum of GP is applicable only when the final term, uh, uh, if, if every term keeps on decreasing, okay? We are using this formula only when every term keeps on decreasing. If the GP is converging okay if the gp does not converge we cannot use this formula right if the final value is not zero so that is why roc is going to be real part of s greater than zero fine so now look at the last part e part okay so uh, what am i doing for this part is so they've taken a shifted as well as scaled impulse signal I'm doing this in two parts okay firstly I consider a signal FT which is equal to del AT now you know that what happens in uh, scaling of a signal right if XT has some Laplace XS then X A T is having Laplace 1 by mod A into X of S by A so similarly, del of A T is going to have Laplace 1 by mod A, right? Since X of S is 1, so the scaling is not going to happen there, okay? Now what do we say? We say that there's some, some other signal which is equal to del of A T plus B, this given signal which is X T, okay? I've just taken it as G T here since I took X T already. So G T was del of A T plus B, which I can write as del of A into T plus B by A. Why am I doing this? Because I've already seen the result on scaling. Now I need to see the result on shifting. Which which can be written as. See f of t was already del of a t. Now in place of t I am having t plus b by a. So I can write this as f of t plus b by a. See I considered f t is del of a into t. Now I've changed this uh, variable to t plus b by a. So this is going to be f of t plus b by a. Now what is going to happen? So. See. What is G of S going to be? Okay. Just look this from here. Okay. What is this going to be? This is going to be. What happens when you are shifting a signal in a time domain? You are going to multiply this with e to the power S B by A into F S. Right. This is what we do. Okay. This, this signal was a shifted version. So whenever you are providing a shift of B by A, you are going to have multiplication with e into E, key power, uh, e to power S into B by A into Fs. Now we've already calculated Fs, right? This is what Fs was. So now you just, if you just put it here, what do you get? 1 by mod A into E to the power S B by A. And what about ROC? ROC is going to be all S. This is valid for all S values. Fine. So this is how you're solving problems like this. Now look at another problem. Fine, so now look at this question. So they have given you the Laplace transform of ut only, which we know that Laplace transform of ut is going to be 1 by s for real part of s for real part of s greater than 0. Right, this is going to be the ROC and this is going to be Laplace transform. Now they say that for all the given signals, all these uh, 7 signals that they have given, you have to derive the Laplace transform using this one, using Laplace transform of ut. That is, you need to relate these signals to ut in time domain and thus correspondingly using the properties of Laplace domain, uh, you have to find the Laplace of these signals. So look at the first signal. We know that impulse signal del T is differentiation of UT, differentiation. Now you know that when you are differentiating in the time domain, what happens in S domain? In S domain, you are having multiplication with S. So, del T which is equal to differentiation of UT in time domain this is going to have multiplication with S which is equal to 1. And what happens to ROC? ROC is going to be all S. 
or less since there is no pole no zero right so roc is going to be or less see pole zero cancellation occurred so, uh, previously we had a pole at s equal to zero and according to the signal we saw uh, we said that roc is going to be real part of s greater than zero now here pole zero cancellation occurred so roc is going to be the complete s plane right now look at the next part now you need to calculate del dash t now again using the time differentiation property from this part del dash t is differentiation of del t or you can say double differentiation of unit step function so del dash t is going to have laplace as s again you are multiplying with s right so this is going to be s and what is going to be the roc entire s plane again now you having t u t so this is multiplication with t property or what do i say differentiation in s domain property so you know that multiplication of any signal with minus t is going to have what is going to happen differentiation in s domain okay since they have not taken the minus sign here we're going to take it here if you just perform this differentiation what are you going to have 1 by s square and roc is going to remain the same right now look at the next part this is simple shifting in s domain since you multiplied with e to the power minus a t then you are going to obtain a shift of s plus a and roc is going to change this is going to become real part of s greater than minus a right now look at the fifth part this is same thing same uh, function that we performed in the previous part in part d and again they are using the multiplying with t that is differentiation in s property so what is going to happen just the previous one, just the previous result I am using, this is going to be differentiation, differentiated in S domain. Upon which, what are you going to obtain? You going to obtain 1 by S plus A whole square, 1 by S plus A whole square. And what is going to be the ROC real part of S greater than minus A. Right. Now look at the uh, F part. So we have seen this uh, from the when we learnt about the formulas we have seen this but now since we have to derive this using results of ut only what can i write this see we have learnt about euler's signal right we learnt about this kind of signal e to the power j omega this what we do we what did we write we wrote this as cos omega plus j sin omega right so i am making use of this euler's signal here if i just have to represent cos omega this cos in terms of Euler signal what can I write it as I can write it as 1 by 2 into e to the power j omega naught t plus e to the power minus j omega naught t see in uh, if, if I try to write e to the power minus j omega there is going to be cos omega minus j sin omega since this is a odd signal right so when you add these kind of two signals you are going to obtain 2 cos omega right that is why I have multiplied with 1 by 2 so this is how I can represent cos omega naught t in terms of Euler signal okay this is into ut so now uh, what can I I can just I am just separating the terms this is going to be e to the power j omega naught t ut plus 1 by 2 e to the power minus j omega naught t ut now again just use the linearity property of laplace transform and fine so this is multiplication with e, a, e to the power s naught t ut this is multiplication time domain so this is going to be a shift in s domain shift of opposite sign in s domain plus 1 by 2 into 1 by s plus j omega naught right this is how this is how shift is going to happen so just try to combine this take lcm this is going to be s square minus j omega naught whole square s plus j omega naught plus s minus j omega naught and uh, 2 was already there so what do you obtain 2s upon 2 into s square this j square is going to be minus 1 so this is going to be so what do you get s upon s square plus omega naught square and what is going to be the roc real part of s greater than 0 see this is uh, what formula also we are having right the formula for cos omega naught t ut laplace of cos omega naught t ut was same right fine now look at the uh, last part so we just multiplying the previous signal with e to the power minus a t. So what is going to happen? Multiplication with e to the power minus a t in time domain is going to create a shift of plus a in the 
Laplace domain. So this same signal is going to become s plus a upon s plus a whole square plus omega naught square and ROC is going to modify like this right just simply shifting in s domain fine so this is how you can uh, just uh, calculate laplace of some signals using result of one signal just using the property okay now next we are just going to verify the convolution property what did we study in the convolution property that if two signals so this is uh, also uh, i am taking in form of a question we studied that if two signals are uh, convoluted in time domain then in s domain in laplace domain they are going to be multiplied right their laplace is going to be multiplied and roc is going to be intersection of individual rocs right so uh, what am I doing is I say that suppose yt is the output yt is the convolution of these two signals right x1t into x2t convolution x2t what can I write this as this can be written as integration from minus infinity to infinity x1 tau x2 t minus tau d tau right now if I just try to find out Laplace of this output ys then what is going to happen what is output of this uh, Laplace of this so this is going to be minus infinity to infinity yt to the power minus st right in place of yt i just put this result yt into e to the power minus st dt right this is how we are finding laplace of a signal now what do i do i just take some terms i'm, I'm taking this x1 tau out of this uh, integration just changing the order of integration so I am taking x1 tau out inside this integration I keep x2 t minus tau e to the power minus st dt right I just put this in one single bracket outside I am having d tau right so if you just see this this is going to be the Laplace transform of shifted signal t minus tau right if, if we had x2 t here I would say this corresponds to xs but now I have provided a shift of tau in this signal x2t so I say that this bracket represents the Laplace transform of shifted signal x2t minus tau so what can I say whenever we are having a shift of some some uh, some tau in this signal what can its Laplace transform be written as e to the power minus s tau shifting in time domain leads to multiplication in s domain into x2s d tau right now you can just take this x2s out so what can i say this is minus infinity to infinity x1 tau e to the power minus s tau d tau into x2s now if you just look at this expression carefully this is actually finding the Laplace transform of x1 tau right what do we do for finding Laplace transform of a function multiplication of function with e to the power minus s tau and integration from minus infinity to infinity so this is actually x1 x into x2s right this is what we needed to prove that convolution in time domain is multiplication of Laplace transforms now what if we discuss about the ROC ROC is going to contain the intersection of ROC of x1s and x2s right so if a 0 1 transform cancels a pole of the other then I uh, this ROC of ys may be larger right if there is a pole 0 cancellation occurring between these two then it can be larger that is why you're using this sign okay this sign means that this r dash is a superset that means it contains this it, it is going to contain this or maybe even larger right so this is how we're signifying we're just justifying this ROC Okay, so this is all about properties.